Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Gloria, could you please lead us in the confession of sin? Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Sorry, and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The Lord has shown forth his glory. Come, let us adore him. Sue, could you please pray Psalm 100? Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Psalm today is number 25. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf. And Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fires. The voice the of the Lord, Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees wreathe. And strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The, the Lord, Lord sits. Good. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first reading is from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. He called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gloria, could you please lead us in the song of the redeemed? O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth. O King of all the ages, who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you alone are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you. 
because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle is taken from Acts. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, into what then were you baptized? They answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John was baptized with the baptism of repentance tell the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongue and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. The word of the Lord. Be to God. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. <clears throat> and people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a weather, leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John of the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit ascending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning, I can be saying to all of you, happy Timcot. Timcot is a very important festival of the church, the Orthodox Church of Ethiopia, with about 40 million members and counting. Timkat is one of the world's most spectacular religious festivals. A three-day celebration literally brings large areas of the country to a halt in a season dedicated to elaborate rituals, to feasting and gift-giving, pageantry and mysticism, vast pilgrimages and procession. But what are Ethians, Ethiopians celebrating so passionately? Timcot on January 6th. Timcot commemorates the baptism of Christ in the Jordan. When many in the world are celebrating the arrival of the Magi, much of the world on January 6th is celebrating the baptism of Jesus. Baptismal symbolism dominates the rituals of Timcot to the point that enthusiastic believers plunge into consecrated pools to renew their vows. The baptismal theme recalls some very early debates in the Christian church, controversies that were raging not long after apostolic times. Timcot is, in fact, related to those ancient Christian beliefs and controversies. Churches around the world naturally make much of the Christmas season that marks the manifestation of God's glory in the world, but they vary greatly on the limits of the season and its exact meaning. For many Western Christians, the focus of the celebration tends to be not the December 5th birth, but Epiphany, the January 6th visit of the Magi. Christians in the Orthodox tradition, however, link epiphany to Christ's baptism in the Jordan. And still others historically have seen Christ's miracle of changing water into wine at the marriage feast in Cana as the epiphany, 
manifestation, revelation that Jesus is God's son. In a nutshell, in the first three Christian centuries, believers had very different ideas about the divinity of Christ and whether there was a particular moment at which he gained that status. Yes, Christ came into the world, but when exactly did that divinity shine forth? The mainstream church believed that the baby born in Bethlehem was God incarnate. But for many early Christians, Jesus was a good or holy man, conceived and born in the usual way, and only at the moment of his baptism was he suddenly overwhelmed by the power of divinity, the Logos, or Holy Spirit. That understanding easily arises if one reads just today's Gospels of Mark or John without considering the birth stories that are in Matthew and Luke. Both John and Mark begin their narratives with the story of John the Baptist, not the birth of Jesus, followed by Jesus' baptism when some extraordinary power seems to be deemed on him. At that point, Jesus flees into the wilderness, presumably to confront the astonishing new reality he has encountered. Early in the second century, this idea of Jesus being possessed and overwhelmed by a divine force at his baptism became the standard Gnostic view, which the larger church considered heresy. Historians have long debated exactly why churches celebrate Christmas at midwinter. The scholars usually link it to the Roman Saturnalia festival and the idea of giving Christmas a stronghold in a pagan culture. But other agendas were at work too. It was the church's attempt to focus on Jesus' birth rather than baptism or his first miracle as the defining moment of his divinity and humanity. Still, the baptism of Jesus became the birth of God's son narrative for much of the ancient world, more so than Christmas. And in some quadrants, it remains so to this day. Keep in mind that there was no Christmas celebration anywhere in the church before the ninth century. For the church of today, whether the story of nativity is away in the manger or immersed in the Jordan, the baptism of Jesus sets the tone for the entire season we call Epiphany, even while the wedding feast at Cana announces the public ministry of Jesus. Epiphany is the season of lights, where the baptism of Jesus manifesting that he is God's well-beloved son is a light that has us see things in a new way. A carpenter's son, who certainly isn't known for making cabinets or chairs, but who also is not known for anything at all, is named God's own. He is not a successful leader who brings together opposing parties and forges creative compromises. He's not a military marvel who has won victories over the enemy. He's not a rich vineyard owner or even a hardworking fisherman breadwinner for his family. But when you shine God's light on him, as Jesus comes up out of the waters, this relative nobody with the same name as countless other men his age is manifested as God's own. My son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. A blessing of love with the implication of a mission that the beloved child of God, now an adult, will seek to do the will of the one who loves him. When you see Jesus in this light, what then about you? If your baptism day was your Christmas day, your new birth day, what does that suggest about your life being a season of lights? About you being God's own beloved? How in your life have you been shining God's light such that people see things in a new way? What miracles have been worked as a result. Whether you marvel at the wisdom of the Magi, the voice of God calling Jesus his very own as he emerges from the Jordan, 
or Mary telling the stewards at the wedding feast to do exactly as her son said. What do you see? What is revealed or manifested to you that makes you wonder? Amen. Father, you please lead us in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. Mm. Okay, <laughs> he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together in the words Jesus taught us. Shall we? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Sue, could you please help with the suffrages? Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan, proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Pray now for the sick and the suffering. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort, and we leave your sick servants. We pray especially today for Anita Alexander, Ezekiel Almash, Josephine Orlando, Mark Gaeta, Ashley Emerson and Hudson Mize Gaeta, Tom Manuel, David and Janet Reese, Brian Percival, Jane Thornton, Helen Walsh, Helen Ha. Conchetta Pumalisi, Richard C. Almash, Victoria Ferry, Parker Mones, Anna Kerr Good, April Kerr Valentine, Kathy Clark, other others. Paul Hoffman and Stephanie Seaman. Veronica's mother, Walter and Roberta. Tom um, Wells. Lord, we ask that you give your power of healing to those that minister to their needs, that they may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in your loving care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we pray the prayer for mission today under the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Diocese of Abaye in South Sudan. We pray for the mission of the church, the, the church of the province of the Indian Ocean, for all those being baptized on this feast day of the baptism of our Lord, for our Bishop Larry, for Father Tom, our vicar, and for Dan Kinney, our musical minister and organist. Well, could you lead us, please, in the prayer of mission? Two. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you, through Jesus our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We also pray, and um, you know, it was a sad, um, sad event. Wendy, um, Wendy uh, Southard, the daughter of Barbara Southard, the former 
poet laureate of Suffolk County and a really good friend of All Souls. Her, her daughter passed away very suddenly um, and to be laid to rest uh, uh, today. We pray for her and for the repose of her soul. We also pray in Thanksgiving for all those who give themselves for the good ministry and, and mission of All Souls, especially at this time of year for those who are pledging for the first time their talent, treasure, and support in our parish life. Are there other intentions that you bring today? For a continued existence of the uh, accessibility project um, for people being persecuted because of their religion, especially Christians, and all people experiencing hunger. So, um, the prayer of general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servant, give you humble thanks to us and to all you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of our mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by wandering before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. And Sue, could you lead us in the prayer of St. Christendom, please? Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.